Cord to the cloud, exciting stuff. Welcome to the first cast meeting for Twilight Los Angeles, 1992. left in February of last year because of the pandemic. We moved out into the world, everybody did their thing, and I started looking at the events that were happening across America. I started looking at the Black Lives Matter movement as it was getting bigger and finding more steam and becoming more prominent in a really good way. So I revisited my shelf of plays and I started rereading things and trying to find a different voice for the first play that I was going to direct here. I reached out to Bill Church, the director of theater, and he handed me a couple more titles. But there's plays that you that I can and can't direct or should and shouldn't direct, and I also have to have a way into the text. The case that shocked the world, and now it has exploded into a city out of control. The defendants being congratulated as the verdict, not guilty, rang through the packed courtroom over and over again. Twilight Los Angeles, 1992, by Anna Devere Smith. Uh, is a verbatim piece or documentary theater. So what happened is the event, the trial for the officers who beat Rodney King, that, uh, that moment in life happened and Center Theater Group called Anna Devere Smith and said, we want to commission a piece. We know you do documentary or verbatim theater. Would you be willing to write a show? And she apparently said yes. I mean, art should make up for the deficits of journalism, just like journalism should make up for the deficits of civic discourse uh, among politicians and institutions. She takes the exact words that the people are saying. The thought is not to create characters, but to represent real people. I played Jesse Norman. Well, sing. Sing Jesus Loves Me. You like that song. And then I played Mrs. Young Soon Han. The fire was still there. Now, how do you call it the igni igni igniting fire? Um, I feel quite similar to Jessie Norman. She's really passionate about arts education, and I felt like I connected to her on a lot of levels, and I really agreed with the things she was saying in her monologue, but Mrs. Young Soon Han was a little bit different for me, and that was a challenge, but um, she has a lot of empathy, so I found like a way to like connect to her through that. I play Angela King and I also play Maria. And Angela King is probably my. Oh, his hands! Oh, I got him! I got him! I got a big. About this big. <laughs> like, she's such a dramatic and very um, crazy person, but she has a truth to her and she has a pain and hurt to her that I can totally relate to, it, especially when it comes to the racial injustice here in America. As far as Maria, she's a mimic. I really don't think it's fair that you call me an asshole like that. I think you should apologize to me in front of everyone. I really don't think that's fair. When she explains things, she's very dynamic, but Maria has a certain poise to her because she is a juror and she has, um, a certain amount of class, but when she's talking to like her friend, because I'm talking to my friend in the monologue, she is able to let go and basically tell how hard it is to be a black woman in a setting with all of these other jurors who don't necessarily understand the full meaning of the case. We started right away with the semester when we were all still in quarantine. So the things that I would normally do were thrown out the window. So instead we did a lot of table work. I, I brought into the process a lot of the research that I had lived with about policing in America to give us context. We talked about these new events with the understanding and had some really frank conversations. Throughout the entire process, SJ wanted to make sure that nobody was misrepresented, that nobody felt that this was too much or that this piece wasn't together. So throughout that entire process, just checking in with everybody and make sure that everybody was okay and what, the, the, and what they're doing and to make sure that people weren't trying to, if they were playing a different race or a immigrant like I was or something, that they weren't trying to be like, I'm an immigrant and I'm going to try to feel like that. Like, no, if you're a white person playing a black person, you can't possibly feel how a black person is going to feel, not fully. By that we did, well, don't try to find like the black rage you're not going to get that. Try to find your divine fury, which is something we used a lot. We used a lot. I see your divine patience, but where's your divine fury? I don't give a damn who tells me to damn me as long as I can talk, as long as I can understand them. I don't care. But that's a different story. Each, each one of these beats. 
needs, right? When we get to smoke, we need to increase the tempo. My brother's son was out there looking like hell that I saw there in that bed, and I was gonna fight for every bit of our justice and fairness. I was delighted by so many elements within the design world. You know, the set, I could not have, I would not have designed that set. And now looking back at it, if I had designed it, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. The idea to put us on the corner of that street, you know, that's a stroke of genius. That's so smart to put us in place. Who thinks of that, Jacob Hollins? Well, beginning of design process always starts with like reading the script and just talking about it. And then we got into the process and we start with an emotional response image. And then from that emotional response image, I moved on to research. Um, and then it really came to down to implementation. Uh, I found a couple of research images that I really liked. And then I took those research images and I created a set with it. And the beginning of the process of the set were just putting that road down, putting the back walls up, and trying to figure out what would go on the projection services. We were originally thinking graffiti, but then we moved to newspapers because I was worried about the integrity of the projections and making sure that they could be seen well. But newspapers seems to fall right in line with the show because it's all about moments and time and what was going on. And so that was really fun. Um, and that's kind of where it's been. And then after I drafted it in SketchUp, we moved on to actually building it and putting it up in the space. We had a backup plan for almost everything. We actually recorded an entire Zoom version just in case. We'd gone through so many false starts because it was, okay, we're about to go into tech week and then we locked down for two weeks. And eventually we finally got to the point when we were back in class two weeks later on Wednesday. And that was our tech, our Q to Q. It was kind of strange because we'd just come out of quarantine. So it felt like, kind of like a rush to the finish line because we came out and literally that afternoon we like put it up on its feet and like we did it in like five days. Like all it was all over in five days. Okay. Sure. I'm talking. Um, I it's really around there. I yelled at somebody in school. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Cause this is without all the layers that we discussed earlier because right. I haven't been able to add that's those a starting yet. Point is great. Wait, so I'm not going to be doing the song. So as soon as she, so she ends song, okay, what should happen is she should disconnect it and set it down. Somebody give me a thing to throw. The same on this buddy over here, on his, on his friend over here. Yep. Thank you, please, and thank you. Thank you, thank you. No, we definitely need an audience. We need that interaction. We need that sense. <laughs>
black body stringing in the southern breeze. Strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. Act one, once upon a time, I told them something happens Cooperate, man. Your hands? Let them call you what they want. Be sure to tell me who they are, but they never told me. What's going on? And how could this happen in California? And what's going to happen to our town? And, and, and these poor people? And, 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 and totally down and down and down. I followed the trial because I wanted to see if justice works. And on that particular day, justice didn't work. I tell my cast on opening, I've done as much as I can do. You're still going to get notes from me, things like that, but my work is done. This is now your play. This needs to be a conversation between you and your audience, and that's where I leave it, and I give that up to them. Well, with live theater, you never know what's going to happen. It's always spontaneous. It's never something that you can um, predict. When I was backstage, I overheard them talking, and they were like talking about they didn't know when to clap. They were like, and I heard them talking, they were like, I don't know when to clap. And I was like, oh, okay. so there, it's, so, a, it's, just a, it's a nervousness that, that they just... No, they, they, they think they're, like, they're scared. They were thinking, and that was the biggest point. We wanted people to think. Making sure that you think about what's going on and the different point of views and how this is affecting all of us as a whole country, not just as black people or white people, but everybody. They're saying this man, he did this to a police officer. Why should we spend money on a man like that? And they kept talking about how he had parole and that stuff didn't have anything to do with the case. The case was, was his civil rights violated? This was not what kind of man Ronnie King was or what kind of man the defendants were. To use the language of decline, decay, and despair rather than doom, gloom, and no possibility because I think any type of despair is not where you end but where you start and then the courage and then the sacrifice come in at level of hope. I think that we performed it to our best ability. I feel like we all put everything we had on that stage. I felt like we all got a reminder on why we're doing this type of theater and what we're doing and why this is all important. Be a true human being. I can't forever dwell in darkness. I can't forever dwell in the idea of just identifying with people like me and understanding me and mine. I'm, I'm most proud of how everything came together. I think we got a, a group of people who normally wouldn't talk to one another, and that's, that's one of the things I really appreciate with the shows we do is this got to break the like the so-called barrier between us. And so now I'm just happy that we've created this family that has been so like comfortable with one another. <laughs> I think that we built a lot of connections within the cast and because of the certain characters that's in the show, I think that has made us very connected to each other because we hold some truths to some of the characters. So I think being able to bond in that way and also just having such amazing personalities. Guess who? Twilight, Los Angeles, 1992. This is the director, the Moldus Light Play. But it's okay, because we'll cut it with the scissors that we mentioned earlier. <laughs> Twilight is that time between day and night. Limbo.